Dear students, welcome to Vedic IAS Academy's virtual classroom. When I say classroom, we're talking about each of us sitting together in a class and watching the class together. Once you are enrolled into the academy, we will provide you with the aptitude and interest test. So what is aptitude? Aptitude is nothing but to test your ability in different areas of academics. Next, let me go with interest test. Interest test is to see where your area of interest lies. It can be in administration, in commerce or even in science. So depending on these two tests, the third will be counselling. A psychometric counsellor will be appointed to you at your specific time and a counselling will be done within half an hour, after which a report will be sent to each of your parent. Next is the syllabus. Once you're enrolled with us, you will receive the syllabus of UPSE and how Vedic IAS Academy will take those subjects equally along with the UPSE syllabus. Next, we have an introduction by our Chancellor, Dr. Babu Sebastian. Vedic IAS Academy is going to conduct a free webinar on UN Civil Service and Indian Civil Service. And an induction to Vedic IAS Academy by Dr. Alexander Jacob, IPS, the Academic Dean. This program is going to change your life completely to different course of action. You will lead from here to great success. Next, we will provide you with reading material and learning material. Reading material and the learning material will reach you at least a week prior and or a day or two. Next, we have the attractive animated videos for each subject, for history, for geography, etc. Welcome to a brief session on the Vedic Age. In India's ancient history, the Vedic age falls between 1500 BC and 600 BC. After the decline of the Indus Valley Civilization, Vedic age is the next major civilization that occurred in ancient India. The age gets its name from the four Vedas that were composed during this period. The Vedas are also the chief source of information about this era. The Vedic age started with the arriving of the Aryans or Indo-Aryans. Indo-Aryan Migration to Vedic Civilization The Aryans were semi-nomadic pastoral people as against the people of Indus Valley Civilization who were urbanized. The original homeland of the Aryans is not clear. They seem to have lived in the steppes stretching from southern Russia to Central Asia. Balgangadhar Tilak suggested that the Aryans came from the Arctic region. The Vedic age started with the Aryan occupation of the Indo-Gangetic plains. The word Arya means noble and we know about Aryans from the Rig Veda. The Aryans spoke Sanskrit, an Indo-European language, and Rig Veda is the earliest text in this language. Earliest Aryans lived in eastern Afghanistan Northwest frontier province Punjab and fringes of western Uttar Pradesh. They are believed to have entered India through the Khyber Pass. Sindhu is the most frequently mentioned river by the Aryans. Saraswati is also called Nadi Tama. Welcome to a session on India's physiography. As you know, India is a vast country with varied landforms. It has roughly all main physical features of the earth, that is, mountains, plains, deserts, plateaus, and islands. Let us learn in detail about the physical features of India and how they have been formed. India was formed during different geological periods, which has influenced her physical features to a large extent. The land is characterized by great diversity in its physical features. Apart from the geological factors, several processes 
such as weathering, erosion, and depositions have modified India to its present form. On the basis of its varied geological structures, India is broadly classified into three geological divisions. They are the peninsular block, the Himalayas, and other peninsular mountains, and Indo-Ganga Brahmaputra Plain. The peninsular plateau comprises one of the ancient land masses and is one among the most stable land blocks on the Earth's surface. The Himalayas and the northern plains are the most recent landforms. Geologically, the Himalayan mountains are not considered as a stable zone. The Himalaya mountain system presents a robust topography. It has high peaks, deep valleys, and fast-flowing rivers. Next, we have online classes by experts such as Dr. Alexander Jacob, IPS, the Academic Dean of Vedic IAS Academy, by Mr. Atul Shankar, Mr. Srijit, and Mr. Sadhvik Reddy. We have a variety and eminent personalities such as these to take your classes online. He had the art of speaking, public speaking. He will shout widely, shake his whole body, use his head to swing in the air, and he will speak. He had an inherent hatred in him for two sets of people. One is the Jews. He hated the Jews. He thought the Jews are creating the whole problem. Partly there was some truth, because uh, Rothschilds and the Florentine bankers, all of them are Jews. And uh, uh, Shakespeare, when he wrote his uh, Merchant of Venice, he made Shiloh a Jew because Britishers and the Germans hated the Jews. And this uh, basic hatred, he started expressing in his speeches. All these Jews are creating all this problem. And then the second person uh, he hated was the communist. Somehow deep in his heart, he had a feeling that the Russians should not be trusted. Moving forward. Let us understand the concept. Here, the public sector enterprises, the government of India hold some stake in the public sector enterprises. The government holds a majority stake. It has been shown as blue in the pie chart. Then, the public like us, it could be uh, individuals, citizens, they would also hold a stake in a public sector enterprise. And apart from that, there could be institutional investors who have received the share through private placement. So whatever I am discussing with you in the class, it will be a basics plus the current efforts of the day on which I am teaching you till this day, most important aspects. So tomorrow, new events may happen so you should update on that so whatever we'll be discussing will be uh, the basic uh, tenets of that relations or the basic foundations on which the relations happen generally and what are the recent events in the relations so only those things we will discuss again see as such for international relations as such there is no once and the side one is a low pressure system. This is a low pressure system. This is a high pressure system. So there is a divergence happening here, which means it's a high pressure zone, which means it's a high pressure system. When it's a high pressure system, the winds blow from the high pressure onto the outside areas, thereby creating anti-cyclonic circulation and thereby it forms surface anti-cyclone. What does it form? Surface anticycle. Okay. So both the things at the surface has already been discussed. Moving up, up in the troposphere at the height of 13 to 14 kilometers. What do you see? Wherever it is low pressure zone or convergence at the surface, the wind blows up in cycloric formation. See, the wind is of ethics. Before I come to the main topic, let me inform you 
that we have already covered three important topics that is essence of ethics determinants of ethics and consequences of ethics in human actions so when it comes to dimensions of ethics let us first understand the meaning of this term dimension dimension generally means the range of anything the magnitude or the extent so when we talk about dimensions of ethics india has a diverse range of physiographic divisions for example you can see in the northern region you can see himalayan mountains and down there south of the himalayan mountains you can see the northern plains and to the western region you can see the indian desert which is also known as the great indian desert or the thar desert and towards the south of that in almost a triangular region you can see the indian peninsular plateau and towards the right and towards the left of india's peninsular plateau you can also see the coastal plains next we have live q and a sessions from each of these eminent personalities for example we will conduct all the live classes during the weekends so that each of you all will be available at that time and clear all of your doubts next we will come across the student assessment each student will be assessed according to the classes that has been taken before the next what we will focus on are the 100 model exams that you will receive before the preliminary examination we will also provide you with 100 question paper discussions along with the 100 model exam preliminary papers next we have 150 model exams before mains exams as well so you will discuss these 150 question papers of mains and prelims right before your exams next we have mock interview one of the most important part of civil service is your interviews so we will provide you with around 25 mock interviews with our eminent personalities and a panel of judges last but not the least we have peak learning group a group discussion on current affairs each of you students will be provided with a current affair topic from which each of you will have to speak a five minute video on each topic that we will be providing you with. Here ends the virtual class of Vedic IAS Academy.